Well, Brian, how are you? Okay, uh, I'm struck by the news today that uh, even though uh, gay marriage continues to be in the news and the po problems about who can marry whom and why, and yet the big piece of news this morning was that uh, for the first time over 50% of births in the country are to non-white people or non-white babies. Yes. So this is a really significant uh, new piece of um, a, uh, a change in, in the trend. And uh, what nobody says anything about is what they mean by white. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can see, what is white today is different from what was white 100 years ago. And the, the definition of white has been changing gradually over the last 100 years. And now everybody's worried about whites being a minority, even though there are more whites, more different types of people accepted as white today than was the case 100 years ago. Well, I think it's an interesting point because I, I believe that the, uh, the burgeoning Hispanic population in the United States is classified as non-white. Yeah. Which, which I, I do not think, with all due respect, 100 years ago, whether or not... Uh, Mexicans were considered non-white. Well, I think, does, doesn't it uh, have something to do with class? I think it does. Uh, in that, uh, depending on class in the Latin America, which is the part of the world I perhaps know least about, but it's my impression that uh, uh, up until early in the 20th century, most uh, people in the upper classes in most Latin American countries were relatively white and, Hispa and definitely Hispanic, as distinct from, from indigenous populations, mm -hmm. that that has been changing. I, th I think that's exactly correct. And I think also the, uh, the number of people from uh, the islands, the Dominican Republic, um, which is sending many, many people into the U.S. as well. I mean, many of those people are already indigenously populated, if you will, by the time they arrive in the U.S. But tell me why this is significant. Why, why is it significant from a globalization perspective? That because everybody's worried about it. Mm -hmm. Well, not everybody, but it, 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 there must be enough people worried about it for it to be worth putting on the front page of the New York Times. Agreed. Um, which means a certain type of people must be worried about it. That's for sure. <laughs> and, and a lot of those people are people who weren't considered white a generation ago. <laughs> Uh, because apart from uh, the Hispanic issue we were just talking about, there are some Europeans and certainly Jews who were not considered white in the middle of the last century mm -hmm. uh, and are considered white now. Um, and so, of course, if you weren't white before and you are white now, you're more uh, interested in guarding your privilege of being white, uh, if that is still a privilege. But the point that, that seems to me to be most interesting with regard to globalization is the way things are changing and um, how uh, so many people, um, as they see things change, um, particular details don't want those details to change because it has some um, relevance to their own particular standing in the world or their own, the way they see themselves. And I think that's what's going on here. So, in fact, I mean, obviously, in a world of 10 billion people, of whom 5 billion are going to be Chinese, uh, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's, it's, the trend is in that direction. Um, and I don't think the Chinese are considered white, but I'm not even sure about that. I don't, uh, I don't think they are. Uh, then um, we should, uh, if we're a country of immigration and we don't put... Uh, uh, since the middle of the last century, we don't put um, 
um, quotas on particular types of people coming into the country. In fact, we opened up immigration to everybody in the 60s, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's surprising this happens, happen, hasn't happened before, and it's obviously going to, uh, whiteness is not going to be something that is going to be worth counting very soon. Well, let, let me say a few things. I, I remember before, for example, the breakup of uh, the Soviet Union, that the, uh, the, the, the Russian um, majority, in, in fact, became the minority at some point because of the, uh, the burgeoning Islamic population. All right, and then if you if you take the uh, color, the skin pigmentation color, uh, and just tease that out a little bit, there are many many instances where, uh, as you well know, where ruling classes uh, are ruling over societies in which the ruling class is a distinct minority. All right, and that comes to mind Bahrain. Excuse me. It comes to mind what Saddam Hussein uh, was able to pull off in Iraq for so long as a Sunni, Sunni Muslim presiding over a Shia Muslim state. Um, in Saudi Arabia, perhaps, if they released census figures, uh, may have a, a Shia majority population being ruled over by a Sunni uh, minority. Shia majority in one part of the country. In one part of the country. So, I, I and I'm I'm not at all uh, well. I am familiar We're enough with Latin America. Uh, with the recognition that perhaps even until this day, but certainly up until recently, the oligarchical classes that uh, you referenced earlier, which were considered nominally quote-unquote white, were in essence ruling over indigenously populated countries. And the one fellow that pops to mind is that fellow Evo Morales, who was the president of Ecuador, who was quite clearly from visual presentation a member of the indigenously populated uh, minority group. Um, but I guess what I'm, what I'm coming to is that it seems as if finally, um, if you want to use race as a synonymous kind of uh, metric as religion or as a culture group, it seems as if the United States is now in the same boat that an awful lot of other countries are in. And it goes back to what we were talking about before is the lack of institutions uh, per se, to be able to keep up with, with the change on the ground. And here we have, this is a change that is anatomically, biologically as fundamental as you can get. Uh, is it brought on by increased velocity of globalization? As, as Sarah Palin would say, you betcha. But is it, is it something that is in fact globalization? The fact that more non-whites are having babies than whites? I don't know the answer to that. But it's very, very interesting. I agree with you. Well, it's certainly the case that uh, the countries with the um, uh, with co populations that are mainly of European origin have um, their birth rates have gone down faster than other parts of the world, uh, and of course the, the, those are birth rates that actually um, were relatively high um, several hundred years ago, and of have actually been declining gradually for some time, but have gone down rather steeply in the last uh, century. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is um, uh, with so many factors are, are coming together now to create a situation in which diversity is going to be a very different problem than it has been over the over this last generation, the period during which diversity became a major topic of conversation. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering whether or not it's the uh, diversity itself that, that's become the problem or whether or not the, the diversity is, is finally the, uh, the manifestation of, of what is, which, which is in fact the problem. And that is that there are so many interest groups now and they are having a, a difficult time making their voices heard in this cacophony of, of, of different, different interests manifestations that what happens is you seize on something that's about as dare I say it as black and white as you can get and just simply say well look the the birth rate in the US for non-whites is greater than the birth rate for the for the white babies in the US and but I think that that uh, as as the population of the world continues to move towards something like the 10 billion mark um, uh, faster than our institutions that organize everyday life can keep up with it, um, the, 
identity is going to become a bigger and bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And people usually um, struggle to hold on to what identified them in the past. And that is becoming less and less um, possible in, because there's so much mixing going on. And identity is one of the things, one of the factors that has been um, most, uh, has been strongest in the um, um, uh, processes that have created um, um, warfare, battle, mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. um, since the end of the bipolar era in 1991. So there are a lot of um, uh, problems to think about in relation to this. I mean, on the one hand, yes, uh, people who want to hold on to society the way it was can't stand the idea of um, uh, marriage changing as an institution. And, uh, and yet, uh, now there's this bigger thing that may be threatening them, which is being white mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is going to, after all, the people who are, who are most uh, energized about marriage are uh, uh, black Africans in mm -hmm. Central Africa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> paradoxically. Uh, so the thing, the, the 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 extent of the mixing of not only of uh, uh, different um, um, ethnic communities and genetic um, um, populations, but also of of, uh, of values and ideas, is reaching this critical stage where it's so difficult to predict what's the is the next surprise going mm -hmm. to be in the news. Let me let me ask you a, a question, and this is this is really a a, a layman's question, but as as an anthropologist, I mean, life, um, mankind, uh, human Homo erectus, uh, began supposedly in uh, in East Africa, correct? Eastern, s uh, southeast Central Africa, probably. Southeast Central Africa. So at at one point, um, there was if you track it all the way back. At one point there was one race, one skin color that then gradually began to spread and then over uh, several dozen thousand years we've ended up with what we have now which what we have now is under assault by things such as Facebook and uh, all sorts of other uh, velocity creating uh, globalization, social interaction mechanisms that in fact are beginning seemingly to more uh, homogenize what uh, was a uh, hundred years ago a much more heterogeneous um, earth, earth racial pool, if you will. And I'm just wondering that if, assuming we don't blow ourselves up with nuclear weapons or the plague or some such thing, a hundred thousand years from now, I'm wondering what the population pool of this planet is going to look like. I mean, is it any longer going to be defined as, as white or black or Dominican or Asian or Chinese? Because more and more people are going to be getting married, producing children of mixed offspring. And it, it, it's, it seems to be an interesting uh, possibility. We, we could be expanding and then contracting again. It's exciting, isn't it? That's uh, interesting. The, as, as I see it, not being... Uh, uh, um, an evolutionary anthropologist, but I talk to people who are regularly and, and try out these ideas. Um, it's only some 40,000 years since we began to cease um, separating into different parts of the world. And if that process of separating uh, over larger and larger parts of the uh, more and more distant parts of the world had continued, one assumes we would have had to develop into different species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but because the population rate kept growing, um, the, the um, separate communities, small um, uh, nomadic commu wandering communities or mobile communities began to merge. And have, they've been merging at a faster and faster rate from about 40,000 years ago up right to the present, where, of course, we're reaching the what we suppose is going to be the final culmination of that trend. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, the, uh, we were probably um, about a hundred years ago at the point when um, 
the, the merging had reached uh, a particular stage in which there were the remaining divisions were far more different from each other than they'd ever been before. And then over this past hundred years, those final great divisions between the great civilizations and, the, and, and also the few people who are left outside them has gradually um, lessened and yes. everything is coming together into one uh, and we, uh, it looks as though it's moving towards one global community, although of course we can never be sure that's really going to happen until it actually does happen. But I, uh, 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 most people who think in these terms assume that that's going to mean global government, global organization. Um, I think that human beings are incapable of agreeing with each other on that scale. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, it's much more likely that there will be continual flux mm -hmm. and so that there will, there will continue to be um, uh, that we will never have complete homogenization uh, even, even we'll have if a great deal of, of, of differences circulating differences of skin color and uh, uh, facial types and mm -hmm. other physical differences as well as differences of culture, but they will not be so obviously different as they are now, mm -hmm. and um, we won't be so concerned about them as we are now. But people right. are going to need to um, somehow find a base for themselves, find a, a niche for themselves in this enormous society. And it's going to take a long time. No, it will, and of course it, it raises another peril, uh, of course, is that as these, these various uh, interest groups of, of people continue to see their, their own distinctive uh, distinctiveness uh, ebb, um, they tend to react uh, negatively by trying to preserve what, what they, that they think is rightfully theirs and then you end up with extremists. Anyway, it, is, it looks as though we should bring this to a close at uh, uh, this point and I was going to say that I think that we're now in the early parts of a stage that will um, get us, uh, 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 it, it's going to be, identity is going to be the main topic for some time yet. Um, and we've got used to it over the last few decades and it's going to continue to be uh, the main problem internationally. I agree. Um, in the next few decades. And Thank you. perhaps next week we'll talk about what's going to come after that. Thank you, Professor Porter. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm.